live in. Good afternoon, everybody. How are we doing today? Alex Chisnell here joining you for a second webinar today that I am hosted. I am joined by my good friend, Mesh Kumar here, who is gonna be talking about, what are you gonna be talking about? How to sell like a boss. So um, hope you're all safe and well, as always. You can see loads of people piling in here already. So I'm gonna say hi to Noel, uh, Imran, Sharon, Sally, Tom from Godalming, Imran from Sunny Wolves, uh, Ian, Chris from uh, Solo Timber is there, Tracy from the Pathway Group, Rita from Surrey, Andy from Manchester, Mel, Arthur, Karen, Kate, um, who's super excited to see your talk, um, Sharon, uh, Soki, I've put any questions, guys, post them up in the chat box. That way, Mesh gets to see them as well as me so he can answer them. Uh, I've also got James, we've got Karen's asking, will she get copies of the presentation or the recording? I'm sure we can send them somewhere in your direction. Oh, I can send everybody an email from here. I can't attach anything. So, um, Mesh, if you want me to put up an email or something, yeah, um, then we can do that for you. Um, uh, Kane as well. It's coming in as well in London. Um, Aileen, good afternoon from sunny Hollywood. That's got to be a prank, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood with all, not California. Hey, there you go. Had us on the string. Nish from sunny Manchester. Eva from Greece. Got to be nicer than here. It's cold. I'm, I'm from, uh, I'm here in Poole in Dorset. Mesh, where about to you at the moment? Uh, in Sunbury in Surrey. It's Sunbury pretty sunny. Surrey. A little bit windy, but sunny. It's windy as anything here and very grey. Uh, so V, uh, Propagate from Leeds. Miss from Newcastle um hello from athens god we've got loads of people here and you've hit the magic number as well so we're at three figures on here today awesome okay so without further ado um what we're going to do is i am going to be in control of the screen and run the presentation uh, for mesh you're going to see um the little icons of the two of us in the bottom left hand corner of your screen everybody uh presentation will be front and center um, and I'm going to hand you over to um, Umesh, who's co-founder and chief connector at the Twist Supper Club. He is a serial entrepreneur who's founded four startups um, in recent years. Um, we met a couple of years ago, both speaking at the European Startup Festival uh, in Turin in Italy, and I've been friends since. And I'm not going to give you too much of a, an intro because you might well talk about that yourself on your presentation. <laughs> Amazing. So I'm going to hand you over to, to Mesh. I'm going to go and bring up the presentation and um, run that for you. So all questions, everybody, as I say, pop them up in the right hand um, screen and Mesh can either answer them as he goes or we can answer them um, all at the end as well. So I'm just going to jump in here and um, share the screen and hand over to you, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, so firstly, can everyone give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, see me OK, just so we can get rocking and rolling? Perfect. Excellent. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Um, thank you very much, Alex, for the wonderful welcome. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about the art of sales today. Uh, and this could be whether it be for your business, whether it be you as a, an individual, uh, whether you're looking to get a new job, uh, and, and simply trying to survive these crazy times we're living in, uh, whether it be you're working as an employee or as an entrepreneur. So a little bit about me. Next slide, please. So I am a kind of jack of all trades, if you like. I'm an entrepreneur, as Alex said. Um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, the Twist Supper Club, which is an online immersive experience and a dining club and members club where we bring people together and create human connection. Now more than ever, it's a really important thing to be doing and we'll be launching our first series of virtual events soon. So stay tuned for that. I'm also uh, an innovation consultant by um, previous trade. So I work with a lot of big corporates and I have have a lot of experience selling into them. So I can help if you're a particularly a B2B, uh, either entrepreneur or business person. And I'm also an advisor and mentor and a lot of accelerators and startups. So I've seen a lot of the 
the pitfalls and mistakes that you can make with acquiring customers. So hopefully that will be helpful today. So next slide. This is a really important thing that I wanna get across in, in this entire topic. So if you can take one thing away from today, I'm not going to teach you about selling. Selling is actually not the most important thing here. The most important thing is building human connection because people buy from people. You don't buy from a robot. And it's really about building trust and educating your buyer, your, your, your individual that you're trying to sell to. So remember that when you're, whatever you're doing, whether you're looking for a new job, whether you're looking for a pay rise, whether you're looking to get an internship, you want to prove to that person that you're trustworthy, uh, that you can bring some value, some knowledge, some skills to that organization and make them better than had you not applied there. That's really the key. Next slide, please. So this is a really crazy stat that, that I don't really understand, but I can see why it happens. 80% of sales require five follow-ups, at least five follow-ups after the initial contact, but yet 45% of salespeople and salespeople could be individuals applying for a job. It could be uh, entrepreneurs trying to sell their product. It could be a salesperson within a large company, give up after one interaction with an individual. So. You know, the, the kind of the famous phrase, if you're not working hard enough, you won't get what you want. It's the same thing here. You need to constantly iterate and constantly change your tact and develop a relationship with an individual, a company, a client before they're willing to buy from you. So simply saying, hey, would you like to, to buy my product? And they say no. And then saying, OK, and then moving on is not going to cut it particularly nowadays in, in the world of social and the internet, we're constantly bombarded by information, by ads, by pop-ups, by people trying to sell us things. So you have to be front and center and you have to continually get into their mind. So remember that five to seven follow-ups before you get a sale. This is another crazy statistic. Only 13% of customers believe a salesperson can understand their needs and wants. And what that screams to me is, trust they don't believe that the individual selling to them understands their problems their challenges are not frankly listening to them and are not solving their problems so if you're not solving a problem for that customer they're not going to buy from you if you're not listening to their buying signals they're not going to buy from you it's simple as that so really think about what does that customer want do i understand their needs and particularly when you're setting up your own business who is my ideal customer and describe them in great detail. And if you can't, then you have a problem. You need to be really crystal clear on who that customer is and what their problem is. Next slide. And this is a crazy one. You've done all the hard work of getting that customer, getting that client, getting someone to sign up to your app, getting someone to come in, coming along to your supper club or event, but yet you don't ask for referrals. These people have bought in, they've invested time, money, resource, brain power in something. So they clearly believe in you and your product. So ask for advice, ask them, what did you like? Are there any other friends or family that you could recommend me to? That's really the key. So think about that because referrals are one of the easiest things to grow your business. So with all that said and done, sales is a marathon, not a sprint. You are not going to become a great salesperson overnight. And likewise, I'm not going to become the best runner overnight. It takes time. It takes patience. It takes starting off with a 20 minute run and then going up to an hour and then going up to two, three hours. Same thing with sales. You need to start off small, understand one customer's problem, delve into their issues, delve into their challenges. And then from there, you can scale out to multiple customers having, you know, 100 customers, 200 customers, 1,000 customers. There's a really, um, really good thing you should, there's an amazing article and book, you should check it out. It's called 100 True Fans. Um, if you haven't, just Google 100 True Fans and then also now 1,000 True Fans. These are the people that are key to your business. If you can't nail the first 10 to 100 fans and, and people who will buy your product, you're not going to succeed in, in selling millions and millions of whatever you're trying to sell. Next slide. Like that one. 
this is brilliant. I mean, I'm a big dog fan, uh, as are you, Alex, I know. Um, listen, don't sell. This is really important. I was uh, a salesperson doing door-to-door sales um, in Manchester and the Liverpool region when I was about 18 years old. And knocking on doors was not fun. But actually, once I got in the door, I probably spent around 25 minutes of that 35-minute interaction simply listening to them, who they are, what their story is, what they are looking to achieve, what their fears are. And then I build up a picture of what their problem is and who they are as an individual. And then I change my sales tact based on that. So really a salesperson is a listened person, not a salesperson. The sale will be done simply by listening to what they want and then understanding whether your product or service fits with their requirement. Really, really important. Um, so this is uh, an amazing thing. Ask and you shall get. For those of you old enough to remember Ask Jeeves, a fantastic ser search engine before Google came along, um, that's the point. You ask something and it will tell you what you're looking for. The same thing requires with sales. As I mentioned, getting referrals. If you don't ask people, your customers, um, friends, family, people who have bought into you as an individual or as a company, and you don't ask them for advice on how I can iterate my product. What am I doing well? How is my sales pitch? Um, can you introduce me to five people that potentially I would be interested in what I'm selling? If you don't do that, you'll never grow your business. So I always have a rule of thumb that I ask, you know, an individual, whether they bought from me or not, are there five people, companies, individuals that you can recommend that you can do an, a, a warm introduction to? And would you mind doing that introduction? Because I think my product would really be valuable to them, but it will be really helpful if you can do that warm introduction. And as we've said, 90% of people are more than happy to say yes. If they like you and you do it in a really smart and, uh, and responsive way and being authentic in the way that you're, you're asking for that referral, then no problem at all. I remember Ask Jeeves, by the way. Of course. I mean, it was one of my favorite things. <laughs> I've forgotten butler. about it completely. So you showed <laughs> that slide. Um, so the ABCs, right. Um, for people who remember the amazing film, if you haven't watched it, you should totally watch it. Glenn, Gary, Glenn uh, Ross. Coffee is for closers. The ABCs are always be closing. This is a kind of an old, very famous quote that every salesperson believes in. And whilst it's true, you need to be closing, you need to be getting um, you know, more customers over that dotted line and getting that sale, getting that revenue, getting that product out to them. But actually it's about psychology. You need to understand the nuance of them as an individual. You need to understand their fe fears. You need to understand what keeps them up at night. You need to understand their aspirations, their hopes, what they wanna achieve in life. And only then can you build a story and a picture of why your product, your service, your initiative should be what they invest in. So I'll give you an example. Um, when I decided to set up my uh, property real estate company uh, and I was chatting to a couple of uh, investors, I said, why are you investing in startups? Is it simply because you want to make money? Or do you want to have a, a complete and utter change in an industry, in a sector, uh, and have a mark on the world? And the people that said, I want to have a bigger goal than myself are the people that I ended up selling to, because they really resonated with why I set up my business, which was to bring smart people together and help them solve these bigger challenges that we have in the world today. So really try and build that trust and relationship with your customer. And again, an amazing uh, film that you should totally watch, um, Boiler Room. It's all around trading and sales. Um, I, I don't recommend you do anything they did in it, but this quote really stuck in my head. A sale is made on every interaction. Either you made the sale or the individual or the company sold you on the reason why they won't buy today. Either way, whether you're uh, doing an interview and you didn't get the job, whether you're applying for uh, a new role uh, and you and you want to move to a different uh, team, whether you're trying to sell a product or service, you are selling yourself and they are giving you a reason and selling you a reason on whether they should buy from you or not. 
Either way, an interaction is happening. So think very carefully about your language and how you can iterate. And this is a really good opportunity to A-B test what you're doing. So a little bit of practical advice that you can go away and, and learn and develop skill sets. These individuals are amazing salespeople. They're not necessarily salesmen, but they have a unique ability to understand, to educate, to build trust, to build a community. And ultimately, when they put out a product or service, they have a loyal set of fans that buy from them. Gary Vaynerchuk, incredible entrepreneur and salesperson. You should check out his books and his uh, amazing YouTube channel. Tim Ferriss, he is an individual that says, I'm a, I'm a bog, bog standard individual. I have no, no particularly amazing trait, but I'm going to learn from really smart, clever individuals and then copy them. So he has an amazing um, podcast called The Tim Ferriss uh, Show. Brian Tracy, an incredible public speaker who really understands the psychology behind sales. In fact, his book, The Psychology of Sales, is one of the most amazing books I've ever read. Del Carnegie, of course, you know, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. If you haven't read that book, read it. If you've already read it, read it again. And finally, Jocko Winnick. Mm -hmm. This guy, you know, an amazing podcast. He believes in just grinding, in hustle, in not feeling sorry for yourself and simply focusing on building out your skills and showing the world while you're, while you're awesome and having that self-belief. You cannot be amazing at sales if you don't believe in your product and you don't believe in yourself. So if you don't believe in your product, change your product, change company, or get out of that game because you're not going to sell to anyone. You're not going to so argue Holland, with Yoko either. No, he's a scary former <laughs> Navy SEAL that is a jiu-jitsu instructor as well. So, yeah, you have to be careful with him. He's a unit. But yeah, go follow these guys. And so five things very quickly that you can implement right now as a, as a takeaway. Um, take, stop, take stock of your network and categorize them. So go through your LinkedIn, go through your phone book, go through your Facebook and, and Twitter feed and, and create a spreadsheet, whether it be on Google's um, Sheets or whether it be on Excel and categorize by, by name, title, um, job, uh, what particularly sports team they like, an interesting fact about them. In fact, um, my co-founder and I, uh, Vivian, we're going through this process with our own network so we can really gauge an understanding of who these people are so we can connect them with the right people in our network. Doing that simply gives you an overview of where you're strong on, where you're weak on, and where you should be targeting first. Google key terms to find your customers. You know, everyone right now, if you're an entrepreneur looking for a job, trying to, to get into a particular sector, I would go on Twitter, I would go to the search feature, and I would type in, in my case, supper clubs or foodies or um, network events. And I would jump straight into the conversation on, on Twitter or in Facebook groups and see what people are posting about and start interacting with them, building a community, maybe um, giving them advice, telling them about a book or a YouTube channel that could be useful. Not trying to sell your product or service yet, but building in. Then they will naturally go to your profile. Maybe they'll give you a follow and then maybe they'll click on your website and see your links. So that's a really good thing to do. Jump into the conversation rather than trying to think about what does my customer want? Go find out. They're probably telling you out on the internet right now. This is a really simple one. Change your sales process because if you're not getting the results you want, you have to change it up. So A-B test, maybe try a MailChimp, maybe try um, putting a bit of money on Facebook ads and see if it bites. But keep testing, keep iterating, keep learning and try not to fall into that trap of going into the habits that you've done previously. Because if you do what you've done previously, you'll get your previous results. If you want to do something new, you've got to mix it up and you've got to change things and see what works. Also leverage social media to find your buyers. We all know that in the world of COVID-19, when we're at home, you know, I'm looking at my phone 50, 60% more uh, each day. I'm on all the social media channel, uh, channel, channels. I'm being bombarded by various different ads. Um, now is the time to be using social media to your uh, effect and, and to, to be positive in the message that you're putting out there. 
But remember, educate. Don't simply sell. Put out really good content. Put out a free ebook. Put out a podcast. You know, Alex runs an amazing uh, group, the uh, Podpreneur. Go check out that. Put out good content, and people will find you, and then they will buy from you. But remember, it comes back to that original quote: trust and educate. And then finally, study the best to learn their tips and habits, right? Those people I mentioned earlier, like Gary Vaynerchuk, Tim Ferriss, go read their books, go check out their amazing knowledge, learn from them, understand their habits, build good habits, and then you will see the results. By the way, I've got a couple of books that I will recommend to you, but one here, um, it's called The Communication Book, 44 Ideas for Better Conversations Every Day. Go check that out. It's a really small book. Um, but it was amazing. The hundred dollar startup, Chris right, Gilbo. Right. Yeah. This is a brilliant book. Even now, people are looking at side hustles, creating a new business. They're not happy with their job. An amazing book. Um, Edward De Bono, tactics, tactics of smart people, amazing people. How did they reach the pinnacle of their career? Read that for sure. In a world of you know low productivity, particularly when we're all stuck at home and we're trying to inspire ourselves. Getting Things Done by David Allen, one of my favorite books. I read it time and time again, and it's given me great results. Good book. And as, and as I mentioned, just two more, you know, Tools of Titan by Tim Ferriss. Yep. Yeah. And Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk. Another one of and my favorites. I love these books, and I love yeah. all of their content. So just a few books to give you a bit of inspiration. Go buy them on, on Amazon or, or on your Kindle. And yeah. Hopefully that will give you a little bit of inspiration. And so just finally, a, a couple of things that I really want you to take away. Remember, sales is about understanding what the individual wants, but it's also about selling yourself, selling your story. So talk about yourself, talk about your background, why you're in this job, why you're passionate about this product and service. Because at the end of the day, you know, we've seen a backlash against certain big companies with the way that they've approached their customer service, airlines, travel operators, and so forth. Now is the time to be buying local. Now is the time to be championing and buying from an individual or small company. Startups are the ones that are gonna get us out of this mess, not big governments and big corporates. So share your story, put out a podcast, put out a blog, and people will find you. Next slide, please. Bit of a delay there. I've pressed it. <laughs> this is a, a, a really good quote that Gary Vaynerchuk talks about legacy over currency. You know, think long term, don't think short term. You know, COVID 19 is going to change the way we live, absolutely, for the short term, but life will move on. So think about who am I as an individual? What does my business stand for? What am I putting out there content wise? What can people think about? Uh, when it comes to me as an individual and what they think about my business. And ultimately, wisdom surpasses wealth. If you put out good content, if you're helping other people, if you're providing a service that's useful to individuals, then, only then, will you make money. You know, you can make a quick buck for sure, but if you want to create true wealth over time and have longevity, you need to build a legacy and you need to educate and build trust. And the last couple of slides, mm -hmm. be different, right? Like if you try and do what everyone else is doing, Facebook ads that are exactly the same, going, having a Twitter profile, just simply copying all the big corporates, you're not going to stand out from the noise from the crowd. So, you know, there are famous examples of someone who wanted a job, at, I think it was a social chain and they created a Lego of their life and they uh, actually put it in the post and with sweets and chocolates and so forth, they opened it and they were really memorable. The guy that stood, I think it was in Waterloo Station with a sign up uh, and had his, his kind of physical CV on a piece of paper saying, please hire me, here's my number and stood out there for however many days. He got traction, he got um, publicity and ultimately he did things differently. You send out a thousand CVs to the companies and you've simply changed a couple of words you're probably not gonna get the job that you want. So think a little bit differently um, and do things different to your com competition. And again, with sales, don't take it personally. You know, they're not saying no to you necessarily. Maybe they're saying no to the product, 
the service. Maybe they've had a bad experience. Maybe they've just bought a similar product. Maybe they just don't have the money or, or, or the brain space right now. Maybe they've just had an argument with their spouse and they're not in the mood to chat about sales. So just simply take note of their reservations, their problems, their feelings, learn from it, kind of make sure that you understand whether, whether you should go back to them or not, and then move on. Maybe come back to them in six months time. But ultimately, every no is a learning opportunity for you. And then finally, before we get into Q&A, um, you can find me on social media. I'm more than happy to interact with you guys. You can find me on LinkedIn as well or email. But really what I want you to take away from this is that sales is an art form, but sales is about empathy. It's about understanding your customer, understanding the employer that you're trying to attract, understanding the individual, or even the, the person that you're trying to date. You're selling yourself to understand listen to them and then you'll get the results that you want so i hope that was useful any questions please do drop them in the uh in the comments and then i will hopefully answer them awesome thank you very much indeed my friends um pop up your questions as uh, as most says pop your questions up in uh in the box got a question from chris um from solo timberframe that says is a follow-up the same or similar to a touch point um it depends so a touch point could be an area or an opportunity for you to be seen so for example i have a website which is one touch point i have a twitter profile i have a linkedin profile so there are multiple touch points for people to interact with my content a follow-up is more of a direct interaction with that individual or that company so it could be an email it could be a phone call it could be a direct linkedin message or a dm so i think a follow-up is being a little bit more uh, proactive and i think a touch point is perhaps opportunities for them to see your content and therefore potentially interact with you um Okay, with questions flowing in. I was just gonna. I was just gonna say. I will. I will answer that. Questions are flying in. I, I just had words on the tip of my tongue to ask you something myself. Um, so tell us. Um, I obviously know there's people don't, and I, I ask this for everybody that, that I've got on. So when um, we're first made aware of coronavirus and COVID nineteen, I know you weren't in the country. You were in Canada at the time, or, or actually America, and then you pinged up to Canada. Is that right? Yeah, um, I was in the US yeah. when it all kicked off. Um, but yeah, to share with us again what um, what happened to you in your business and any changes, uh, any kind of resets, reviews, recalibrations. All the R words are coming to me now at the moment, obviously. But uh, yeah, just kind of give us a, um, a, a screenshot about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, I launched a supper club, a dining experience in London in January. So, you know. The first event went really well, but then very quickly we, we realized that, oh no, restaurants are no longer open. We can't interact with people. We can't get random people to connect together over food and drink. So we had to completely pivot our model. So we took a bit of time working with my, my business partner, Vivian, to kind of think, well, virtual is the way forward. So we've completely had to pivot on, on, on our entire business model, how we actually interact with our customer, and how we deliver our product and service. So really, um, COVID-19 has been a, a radical shift for me from a business standpoint, but it's also been an opportunity for me to test new opportunities quickly. Um, now I can go global, uh, I can interact with more people. Rather than doing one supper club a month, I could potentially do five a week, rather than simply doing them in London and then in maybe six months expanding to Edinburgh or Belgium or Paris. I can do virtual events so long as I can get the time uh, slot correct. So the opportunity for me to go global and go digital is really, really exciting. So I've managed to adapt as a result of COVID. Yeah, I had uh, Chris Ducker on a couple of weeks ago from uh, Upreneur, and um, he was saying he was literally just about to launch this um, mastermind program, which was basically uh, a monthly coaching call but included like quarterly physical meetups in London. And he was like, well, actually, 
you know, when this happened, we actually looked at it. The the ultimate plan was to put it online because his podcast gets like seven million downloads and is in like two hundred countries across the world. He's like, it just means we can actually accelerate our plans and bring them forward from what we're planning on all along. Absolutely. I mean, if anything, COVID nineteen is going to make the world a much smaller place. Uh, yeah. We're going to be traveling less for sure in in the short term, but the ability to reach all corners of the globe and and get your message out there is a real opportunity for many entrepreneurs and savvy people. Indeed. Um, okay, so uh, Propagate says, what software do you use to organize your, your sales contacts? And obviously there's a bunch of those, but your, yours in particular. Yeah, um, so I don't have anything particularly savvy. I, I, I use Google Sheets and, and Google suite of software. I just found that really useful to navigate on. Um, I have used in the past things like Pipe Drive and Monday.com. Again, if you're a big business, absolutely, you can invest in that. And if you've got a big team and, and lots of different people that you need to kind of move back and forth with, then it's really useful, those things. But I find uh, an open source Google Sheet, um, a mixture of things like to Todoist and uh, Slack um, and Google Suite, that's good enough for me. And if I'm a small in a business of two or three people we can we can share documents very easily so i find mm. that very suitable nice uh tom what are some of the strategies to ask a new sale for referrals absolutely so uh one thing i would do is make that process of asking for referrals really uh both simplistic but also just offhand so i would just call up one of your customers or call up an individual that you know quite well and they've bought from you in the past and just have a chat with them going, hey, I just want to have a, a, a kind of a check in with you, see how you're doing with everything going on with COVID-19, um, build up a little bit of rapport, touch base with them and then say, amazing, great to hear that you're doing well, hope business is going well. By the way, I wondered if you could help me. I'm actually going through and trying to get my product out to a number of other people. And I, I thought of you because I know that you've got a big network would you mind me um, introducing me to a couple of people? So you're, you're both touching base with that contact and strengthening the relationship that you have with them, but then also asking them for something. And people are more likely to do that if you just simply drop them a message on LinkedIn saying, hey, can you introduce me to so-and-so? Mm. So that's one thing I would do. You know, Again, empathy in the world that we're living in. Um, and also the other thing I would do is I would drop people a message. So what I've done with a couple of friends is I've actually just dropped them uh, a little present from Amazon uh, just to kind of say, I'm thinking of you guys in this time. It wasn't very costly, but that immediately had a profound Im impact on them, their mood, and also how receptive they are to me. You can do the same with a customer. For example, a really good sales technique is you can go on Twitter, you can find your customer, you can see them talking about, I don't know, running or Arsenal or whatever it may be whatever their passion is and then you can go on amazon or ebay you can find a signed arsenal football shirt and you can maybe pop it in the post that is an investment you're making in that individual but you're guaranteed sales for life and, and custom for life so that's a really a, another way of of getting a customer and, and a strategy and also a really simple thing you can do is just write them a postcard everybody in in this day and age when we're at home loves unexpected mail whether it be virtual digital but most certainly physical mm. so that's a really good sales strategy that you can use that was funnily enough something i was writing down last night was that i i need to go back and ask the people that i've worked with in, in my business creating podcast people actually go back and, and ask them uh, and it's things they've they've actually said to me before oh yeah you know now you've done that for us we'll refer you on but people forget things people get busy and i think you just need to again consistently consistently follow up for those kinds of things as well absolutely um sharon says do you have a favorite crm or content tool and why oh my favorite content tool is twitter uh because it's not really? about what but really? listen it's not about what you say on twitter it's what everyone else is saying I can gather more information about an individual, their habits, based on what they're tweeting about and what they're replying to. 
I can jump into any conversation in the world right now and get my message heard, but also understand how they're feeling. And because Twitter is a is is a kind of a ranty type platform, yeah, you can really I'm understand. Like <laughs> yeah, but you can really understand that individual, what really sets them off, what gets them fired up, both positively and negatively. So I can understand my customer in, in great detail with Twitter. I think also another really good content tool that I'm utilizing a lot more is I'm listening to more and more podcasts than ever. I think podcasts as a as a tool is really good because I can be hoovering around the house or I could be working out or I could be going for my, you know, one hour daily walk and listening to, to individuals, real people talking about a particular topic. And I find that really engaging more so than than even video these days. Mm. So I think that's a really interesting tool to be using yourself, but also to be listening. It's a tool to be understanding what are the big trends happening in my industry? Who's talking about it on a podcast? Um, what are the, the experts saying on in my particular field? Podcasting is a really good tool to develop your knowledge base as well. Or working out and hoovering. That's quite a good combo. <laughs> or working out and hoovering. Absolutely. <laughs> Those Dysons are heavy. They are, man. Um, yeah, funnily enough, I, I don't know if you saw it. I posted up yesterday um, Acast, to like the biggest podcast company in the world. They're published in a, um, a, a sheet with the latest information. And it was, you know, globally, podcast listenership has gone up 10%. Uh, in the UK, it was up 20%, and France, for some random reason, was 30% leading the way. But it just shows you how many more uh, ears are listening to content. Um, and and she, clearly, they've, they've moved from somewhere else. So is that, you know, looking at a screen, is that from, from YouTube, et cetera? Um, thanks, Mesha. Sharon. Uh, Karen, what are your tried and tested tactics for connecting with a cold lead? So making a cold lead a warm lead so i would do everything in my power to learn about that individual uh, and see do we have any mutual connections do we have any linkedin connections do we have any second connections um is there anyone in that company or has previously worked for that company that could get get me in so thinking a little bit more proactively and a little bit more 360 view with how do i make that cold lead a warm lead um and then as i mentioned find out if they have an Instagram account that's open, find out if they have a, a Twitter account that you can see and gain and understand a bit more about them as an individual. Go on their LinkedIn profile if you can. Oh, we must have just got frozen by the look. Company that you previously worked for. So try and narrow that down as much as you can to make them as warm as possible. Mm. And if you still have no connections and there's no way in, um, I would simply find out and drop them a message and say, hey, um, I, I think that what we're offering is of real interest to you. I would love to send you uh, something. Do you mind sending me your, your address? Do you mind sending me um, the, the best email to contact you on? Uh, I promise if, if it's a not interest, I will leave you alone. But being really genuine and saying, look, I think this is of relevance to you for X, Y, and Z reasons. I think it could add real value to your business, your product, your service. This is why I'm messaging you. I hope you don't mind. Um, if you're offended by this, I totally uh, apologize. But most people, nine out of 10 times, will be like, fair enough. It's the tone in how you message someone, not actually the message itself mm -hmm. that really grates on me sometimes. And for me, it's um, it, it's perseverance and and being determined about it. I was, I was chatting to uh, Magnus Grimmeland, founder of Antler, the global startup generator generator and um, early stage VC, and, and he was saying uh, when it comes to investors, every month they will contact their list of investors and just let them know what they're doing you know, not necessarily beat them over the head with the same message consistently, but over and over again. And he was giving an example of it's, you know, it took him uh, two years uh, to get this this one investor um, who had initially said they, they were interested in investing in Antler. And then when it came to asking, you know, sign the papers, actually, I don't think this is aligns with the businesses we're looking to invest in right now. We said, we just, you know, every month, we just let him know, these are the businesses we've now invested. This is what our portfolio looks like, like now. I said, you know, it took two years, but eventually this guy 
invested a couple of million pounds in it. And then I think it was only two months ago, the co-founder of Facebook invested $50 million into Antler. So, you know, it's just taking that approach, I think, no matter how you know warm or, or cold that lead is, just to nurture them, isn't it, really? That's the phrase, that's the phrase I was looking for. Absolutely. And, and that can be um, the same for investing as well. If you're trying to get in with a VC or an angel, I would try and be smart and find people that have previously worked with that individual or have worked for that company mm. and speak to them and say, hey, I'm trying to approach this investor. What are they like? Um, what makes them tick? What are their no-nos? What really, tell me a little bit more about them as an individual. Gain as much knowledge as you can about that person, how they invest, um, how, how they want to be sold to. And then when you go in with that kind of ask, that cold email or that potential warm intro, you're better prepared. So I think that's a really good tool as well. Nice. Um, Ava says, um, when talking to a customer, how many turns can you do? Meaning how many times can you try to convince him before you close again? I knew that is about three times. So it's a complicated answer. I would say at least four or five times because you can switch focus. You can change your tact you can approach it from a completely different angle in how you sell to them you can approach um, sell in a completely different way so some people will simply send seven seven emails uh out at, over say maybe a two-week period if the first three emails haven't worked is the fifth and sixth one going to work so i would drop them a dm i would send them uh, an email with something that you've worked on so i was having a chat with um uh, a good friend of mine and I was saying what you could do to attract the attention of a potential uh, customer is create some value, create a PDF, create um, a small two page case study on their business from your point of view and email it to them. So that is a completely different hook compared to an email. So actually you can maybe sell to them 10, 15, 20 different ways. So long as they feel different, it doesn't matter. And also there's another thing to be said, just because they're not wanting to buy from you now and you're not getting the buy signals, doesn't mean in six months, 12 months, 18 months, you can't try again. The life cycle of a customer is potentially the life cycle of when it's relevant for them, not simply a two week window for your sales pipeline. So think yeah. about it in longer term uh, potential as well. Yeah, for me, it's you know a, a lot of, I think the constructive time people can, can spend right now is that yes, a lot of businesses simply aren't buying you know so many businesses have furloughed great you know rafts of their staff and it's really it's this week i've started hearing about people being made redundant now as well you know like directors of, of marketing in, in certain companies that, that i was you know working with before for example so um but that doesn't mean that i still haven't been like having inquiries and conversations with people who are looking for example in my business to 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 launch a podcast because again they can see see the stats at the moment are blowing up um, and it's been a growing trend but for me it's all about what you can do now to keep those people interested being so when things change and when you know the conversations i have with it you know when we get budget allocated after this those kind of conversations you are the forefront of their mind not your competitors yeah, absolutely. And I think it comes back to controlling the controllables. You know, I can control the content I'm putting out. I can control my mood. I can control my pro productivity. Um, there are lots of things I can't control. But if I focus on putting out good content, if I focus about helping others, educating, building trust, being front of center, when we do eventually get out of this kind of crazy world and people are buying again and uh, customers are doing more B2B, uh, potential partnerships, they'll be thinking about me during that time. Mm. So that's a, a really important thing to do. And also remember, yes, it's a really tragic time where people are losing their jobs and getting furloughed uh, and so forth. But at the same time, people like uh, retail jobs and the retail sector is doing really well for, when it comes to food and beverage and um, food and beverage being, you know, uh, big retail stores like Tesco, Sainsbury's and so forth, pharmacies and the like. Um, also, other industries that are doing really well at the moment in times like this are, as you mentioned, Alex, podcasting, content providers. You know, we we now need to create more content than ever because we're consuming more than ever. Um, we're seeing things like The Daily Show and 
and all the big US hosts going down into their homes and still creating content and people are still watching it. They're mm. recognizing that the big budgets are not there anymore and it's not gonna be in a big studio, but they're still craving for that stand up, that comedy, that um, podcasting information. So now is the time to be jumping on the bandwagon and, and potentially completely pivoting what you are as an individual and what you stand for to, to ride out these times. Um, in fact, I was having a, a conversation with the CEO of a, their uh, kind of a lifestyle and concierge company. And they said the fastest growing part of their business is actually in virtual assistants. Because yeah. right now, more than ever, people are trying to do more. They're trying to sort out their sales pipeline. They're trying to build uh, a new business, a side hustle. They're trying to sort out their taxes whilst also managing friends, family, home, Zoom calls. And they're feeling overwhelmed and because they've lost that structure. So now they're going and outsourcing some of their their problems to these companies to say, help me out. Uh, this is a new way of working for me. So mm -hmm. actually, I, I think we'll see great opportunity during COVID, but also at the same time, it's an opportunity to take stock, to evaluate what am I good at? What am I weak on? What skills do I need to develop? And how can I be a little bit smarter in what I've been doing in terms of creating revenue and, and sales strategies. And um, what is what's your priority for the for the next um, for the next four weeks? Uh, so, I mean, it's a good question. I, I think right now my priority is getting everything up and running uh, to launch our virtual uh, supper clubs. Um, at the same time, alongside that, I'm, I'm really focusing on how do I pivot my my personal brand because I'm no longer doing uh, traveling and speaking gigs at conferences. Uh, I'm doing more webinars like this. I'm putting out more content. I'm launching a podcast very soon, uh, which is very exciting. Putting out, uh, working on my website and putting out my own blog and my own content. So right now it, it's about really reframing simply because I can't go out and meet my customers. I can't go and do workshops on site and I can't travel to countries to do my speaking gigs. Can I do more virtual? Can I do more education pieces? Can I put out more content and build my brand virtually and digitally? Absolutely. So that's really my focus right now. Nice. Uh, Mihaela says, um, how do you feel about email lookup tools and finding the business email address to send an email to a cold lead instead of LinkedIn message or requesting to connect via LinkedIn first? Uh, th they have been very useful in the past. Uh, you have to be very careful because of GDPR rules uh, and, and how you get these emails. Um, I will, you know, I, I always say to people, it's much better if you can directly message them, interact with them in some way, or get a warm introduction to them. Um, frankly, the world is a very small place. You, you, you should be able to get some sort of direct intro into that individual. And if not, you should be able to find them on Twitter, on Instagram, on, on YouTube, uh, whatever platform that is open where you can drop them a message and, and build that one-to-one -one conversation with. I think that's still the most powerful way of, of getting them on side. Mm, agreed. Um, so just finishing up, any last question, pop it in the box. Otherwise, I'm gonna ask you. So we're asking all our speakers these questions. So two questions. If you had ten thousand pounds to start a business idea today, what would it be? Other than the one you're starting, because I thought you're going to dive right into that. <laughs> oh, ten thousand pounds! What yeah. would I do? Next question: You get a million pounds, by the way, but this is a ten thousand dollar question. Okay, ten thousand pounds. What I would do with that is I would, and it's linked to the million pound question, is I'm really fascinated right now in property real estate and i think you know particularly i live in the outskirts of london and i want to buy in london house prices are crazy the average first-time buyer is 41 in london i think oh, now more than ever no with, yeah with people really? losing their jobs and and savings and so forth buying a buying a house and a first-time house is going to be very difficult so i will work with a designer and an architect and i'll create a tiny home these small little um box homes that you can either a wheel away uh, and, and tow away or their, their small one bedroom, all inclusive homes. Mm. And I would design that. I'll put together a pitch deck, a teaser video. I'll put it out. I'll do a podcast. And I would say, I'm looking to build a small um, community of tiny homes. 
uh, anyone interested in getting involved, anyone looking to be an investor in my product, I'll, I've, got, I've highlighted a plot of land, I need investors. And I'll put it out to the market and I'll see what people would say. That's what I would do. Yeah, Chris from uh, Solo Timber there, he, he does like, um, like grand designs type. Uh, I was looking at your competition earlier on LinkedIn, funnily enough, Chris, he's put a really cool competition up um, to design your dream home. So last question then, if no one else has got one to finish off, I've got the last question, which is, if you had a million pounds to invest in an industry today, what would it be? A million pounds to invest in an industry right now. Um, I would invest in renewable energy, specifically looking at um, how do we utilize uh, geothermal energy, um, particularly in the UK. Um, we're not blessed with the best solar uh, <laughs> energy uh, output here compared to say somewhere like California. But what we are blessed with is really good um, geothermal energy. And I'm a geographer by background. So what I would do is I would invest in small geothermal pumps in communities, rural areas, so that they can get access to um, power uh, cheaply, renewably, and hopefully we can keep this reduction in global warming emissions and, and kind of huge air pollution that, that we're seeing in terms of a reduction in the big cities right now because nobody's going out and we're not you know using cars and lorries and so forth and i think this is the wave now particularly with, with everyone being locked down we're seeing that the environment and nature is really um transforming and, and healing and i think now is the opportunity to get on the renewable bandwagon okay that's a very good answer i like that one um Lots of nice comments saying thank you from Propagate, from Socky as well. Um, yeah, that's us. We, we are running run at a time. Even my Mac says low battery will go, soon go to sleep. There you go. Uh, Kate says thank you as well. Thank you all very much. Um, that was great. I really enjoyed that. Um, do you want to hold up those books one last time so people can screenshot them? How's that? Yes, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to yeah. hang on a sec. I'm going to open the screen, focus it on you. That's that's a great book right there. There you go, people. Um, if you've got your phone, screenshot that. So that's Gary Vaynerchuk, jab, 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 right hook. Boom. I like that one. That's a great book. Um, I love this book. Tim Ferriss, Tools of Titans. I love it. I lent it to someone. Ha! Huh. Have I got it back? No, I have not. Getting things done. Yeah, David Allen, old school, but really good. Um, David Allen, great author, getting things done. Very yeah, good. The, Garfield's joined us. Hey, Garfield's. Yeah, the other one um, kind of similar to that around habits is Atomic Habits by James Clear. Really, really good book as well. Yeah. $100 startup. Yeah, this Chris is the perfect Lillibow. time. Leave yeah, your finger. There you go, Chris there you go. Yeah, yeah, Difficult name yeah. to spell. Uh, meant yeah. to be in my podcast, actually. Meant to be in my podcast, yeah. Chris Yellowbow. And the communication book. Yeah, I don't know that one. Ideas. Um, okay. I, I, I was recommended by a friend and I picked it up and it's a really small book and very small book, very oh, easy yeah. read. I think it's like um, 100 and something pages. No, yeah, 100 pages. Garfield, really really you put back the first two books. So that was Gary Vaynerchuk, Jab, 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 Right Hook. And that yeah. was also... Oh, Tools of Titans. Ah, Tools, Tools of, of Titans, Tim Ferriss. Two of my favorites as well, dude. Two of my favorites. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Um, really useful, practical advice in all of them. Yeah. Mahalis just says, thanks so much, Alex. I wanted to ask the book titles. I kind of <laughs> wondered if other people might have done because um, I wasn't sure how long they were on screen before because I was doing the presentation in another screen. So um, any any last words from yourself, my friends? I posted up your LinkedIn there for people because um, people will watch this on the replay. Literally straight afterwards, people start watching it. And then we'll lift this, everybody, and we'll put it on our YouTube channel as well. Um, but it is up here on the replay on, on the Crowdcast as well. Yeah, I, I think my um, final bit of advice and thoughts is, look, it's a crazy time for everybody. And it's um, probably not going to go away anytime soon. So we have to adjust and we have to think of new ways to innovate and, and sell our, our wares and, and sell our products, services and, and get the jobs that we want. So I think, you know, simply what I, what I said in the presentation, really, think differently, um, educate, build community, build trust, um, 
put out content that you would be proud of and that will add value to other people. And then I think the last thing I would do is engage with them, you know, get into those DMs, drop them a message on Instagram, ask them for their home address and send them a, a little postcard, send them a, a, an email, give them a phone call, just touch, touching base with individuals. Because as I said, people buy from people. Um, until we get taken over by robots right now, sales decisions are made by human beings. And all human beings right now across the world are going through this turbulent and difficult time. So if you can understand empathy, if you can build that trust uh, and, and provide a service that adds value to them, people will buy from you, people will remember you. And when they do have the money and the resource and time later down the line, they'll come back to you. So that's yeah. my, my big tip. Good. And I think what this is, this time has shown and probably continues to show because we still don't know <laughs> what's happening it is that people um, do crave human contact as much as we shut ourselves away from the world and, and look at our screens. Um, you know, last week we were all meant to be at the Festival of Enterprise at Olympia in London and we're not, but you know, we're, we're doing this live online instead. But I, I do think, yes, there's going to be a percentage of people who are still going to feel anxious uh, from all of the, you know, news that's being put out and, and the social media that's been, you know, having another extra spin on that who, might be loath to go out and meet people again but i do think just having listened to you know other other podcasters and and stuff um people like yourself chatting you know people will want to go out and actually meet people again you know some people are going to want to stay indoors and, and hide away i think till some vaccine may or may not ever come out but in the meantime i, I just think just yeah we have there. to get on with life we have to get on you with know, life it's, it's the only the only way is moving forward yeah yeah. Uh, Shirley, absolutely. Very good and practical advice. Didn't feel salesy. Well, that was the key, wasn't it? Without a doubt. Um, Sharon, absolutely. putting a LinkedIn there, which I, you know, I've, so many people have contacted me off the back of doing these, and I owe a whole chunk of time at some point. I need to go back in and connect with everybody, which I will. So, hundred percent. Just bear with me. Um, but yeah, posted up meshes contact details there and mine as well. Um, if people want to find out more about what you're doing at the moment with the Supper Club, is that the easiest place to go to for them? Yeah, um, so there's a sign up page and a holding page at the moment. So before we officially launch, but it's uh, twistsupper.club. Twistsupper.club. Is that www. Yeah. Twist. I'm going to post it up for the for the replays. Twist. Say again. Supper.club. Yeah. Um, there you go. So everyone will see that on the replay then. Twistsupper.club. Boom. Done. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mess. That's been awesome. Um, if you'd like to come back in a couple of weeks, let me know um, because this is really, really well attended, really good feedback, lots of questions. So um, you know where to get hold of me. Thank you, everybody. Have an awesome Thanks, rest of the week. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, guys. Cheers Bye. now.